what's up guys so today i've got my hands on the most exciting mini pc to launch in 2025 so far so this is the minis forum ai x1 pro roll the intro So yeah, as you guys can tell, I'm quite excited about this one. Now, first of all, let me show you what you get inside the box. Okay, so we've got paperwork. We've got a thermal sticker and a metal plate for an SSD drive. Versa mount and screws, so you can mount this mini PC on the back of your monitor. Here we have a very nice looking stand for the mini PC, where you can prop this up vertically on your desk. How convenient is that? So stand is included in the box. We have an HDMI cable, power cable. So you'll notice there is no power supply because the power supply is built into the unit and all you have is a power cable. And last, but certainly not least, the mini PC itself. There's my Mac mini, that is my M2 Mac mini. So it's not the latest Mac, but if you put this on top, you can see it's more or less nearly the same dimensions as my M2 Mac mini. Well, we're gonna run through the specs. So this mini PC is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 processor, which features 12 cores and up to 24 threads, reaching clock speeds of up to 5.1 gigahertz turbo. And for graphics, we have the integrated Radon 890M. This mini PC has 64 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM, and that is dual channel 5600 megahertz RAM. Now for storage, we have a one terabyte M.2 SSD. It's a PCIe Gen 4, and you can swap that drive out for up to four terabytes. Now I believe there is also a spare M.2 SSD slot inside, which I will confirm a little bit later in the video. Now we've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3. We've got dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. You've got USB 4 and Oculink as well. The PC comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Professional and supports triple 4K display output via HDMI 2.1. Then you have USB 4 and then there is a DisplayPort 2.0 as well. There is also a built-in cooling fan inside and a built-in speaker. All right, now let's quickly talk design. The mini PC is made completely from a metal body, but at the bottom, the base is made from plastic finished in black. Now on the front, we have a power button, two USB 3 ports. We've got a USB 4 Type-C port, headphone and microphone jack combo, and a co-pilot key. If we keep going, full-size SD card slot on this side. At the back of the unit, we've got what looks like a reset hole, Kensington lock, we've got USB 2 port, and there you have your Oculink port. So that means we can hook up an external GPU and take full advantage of boosted graphics. We have a second USB 4 Type-C port, DisplayPort 2.0, HDMI 2.1. There's your two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and power socket. You can see an exhaust there to dissipate heat. If we keep going, nothing on this side, and that will bring us back to the front. And I want to quickly show you, you have a fingerprint reader as well, built into the top of the unit, which is pretty awesome. Minis Forum logo right there. Here's a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. AMD Ryzen AI 9HX, absolute beast of a processor. So let's go ahead and check out the upgrade options. I can see there's four screws to open. Let's get cracking. There's another screw here, let's open it anyway. So the bottom case is off and there are no wires connected, which is good and plenty of vents going right through. So nice design. Check it out, guys. We've got dual fans, six, seven, eight. I can see eight screws. Let's see what happens. There's a lot of cables you need to be, be careful of when you lift off this lid. So I'm not taking it completely off, but you can just disconnect the cables from here. So we've got two sticks of crucial branded RAM. They are both they are both 32 gigabytes each, giving us 64 gigs of RAM total. You see another cooling fan right there. Over here you can see our one terabyte M.2 SSD. 
but you'll also note over here we have two spare SSD slots. We can have three SSDs at the same time. Not that bad to access the internals. There are a few screws you need to do and you need to make sure you don't uh, pull on those cables. But apart from that, um, easy upgrade options here as you guys can see and plenty of them. So let's put this back together real carefully. Now the eight screws that you're putting back on, if you're confused where they go, you can see there are white arrows next to each screw. And that is where they go. Now, first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and you can see on screen exactly how long it took to load up to the desktop from a cold start. So here we are, Windows 11 Professional. Let's first of all head over to the system properties and you can see there AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 Radon 890. You've got 64 gigs of RAM and it's a 64 bit operating system, Windows 11 Professional. And if I just quickly show you activation info, you can see it's activated and ready to use. System storage info, we have a one terabyte of internal storage, 951 gigs are usable. And from that we have 878 gigs free to use. I've not installed anything yet. This is what you begin with. Now the second drive that's just appeared is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples. And that is exactly what we're gonna be testing next, playing 4K video samples from a USB drive. So let's start off with high bitrate 4K jellyfish demos. And the first video is 160 megabits per second. And you can see it's playing absolutely fine, super smooth with no issues. Okay, next up, 180 megabits per second, high bitrate jellyfish demo. And again, playing back no sweat, Okay, the real test, and I know it's going to do it fine. 400 megabits per second high bitrate jellyfish sample playing back super smooth. And this PC is powerful. It's going to handle everything you throw at it. There is no doubt about it. So now I'm playing some 4K60 samples with various HDR formats and different file formats, and they are all playing back absolutely fine. I'm um, straight out of the box. I didn't even need to download any codecs to make them work. So 4K USB playback is absolutely awesome. Now while we're here, I also tested out the AV1 codec sample, and that also played back fine. All right, we're moving on now to the YouTube streaming test, starting off with the usual Costa Rica demo clip, and YouTube does support 4K60 with HDR. on the planet. Oh my god. Fortunately for us, all these species exist in one isolated place. Time I want full freedom. Tiger ka hoko. Ese guachillo no es cualquier guachillo, Roga. Es de las fuerzas especiales. So next up, testing out Netflix from the web browser. And you can see 4K streaming with spatial audio is supported. Okay, so time to move on to gaming. And we're going to start off with GTA 5. So resolution is set to 1080p, graphics set to very high, 60Hz refresh, and we're achieving around 70 frames per second average, with the TDP peaking at around 47 watts. All right, so let's try something a bit more recent, A Plague Tale. This game is quite graphically intense. Resolution is again 1080p 60, and I've set the graphics preset to high. So as you guys can see, we are achieving around 30 frames per second. Now I run the game again to see if I can achieve a better frame rate, but this time I changed the graphics preset from high to medium, and you can see we're achieving a slightly higher, but still under 40 frames per second. So that is what you can expect from this game. All right, so the next game we're playing is Black Myth Wukong. So resolution is set to 1080p 60, and I have the graphics preset to medium. And you can see we're achieving a pretty decent 60 frames per second average. The game looks and plays pretty good at medium graphics. But just to test it out, I then changed the graphics preset to high. And now you can see there is a slight dip in frame rate, bringing it to just over 43 frames per second, but with the slightly better visuals. So that's Black Myth Wukong. 
So now we're playing Call of Duty Cold War. I've got the resolution set to 1080p and the graphics preset is set to medium. And you can see we're achieving a pretty decent 100 frames per second average. They're dead. Okay, so next up we're playing Assassin's Creed Mirage, resolution 1080p 60, and graphics set to maximum ultra high level. And you can see we're achieving an average of 55 frames per second, which is actually not bad. And to see if I can further improve that frame rate, I switched to the graphics preset down to high, and now you can see we are averaging around 58 frames per second. So now we're playing one of my new favorite games, Marvel Rivals, resolution 1080p 60, and graphics maxed out to ultra and we're achieving around an average of 24 frames per second. And to achieve a more higher consistent 30 FPS, I dropped the graphics preset to high. So if you want to play Rivals, this is what you guys can expect. And I would recommend the graphics preset from low to medium to give you the best overall performance for this game. Okay, so now we are playing COD Warzone with resolution set to 1080p, 144Hz refresh, and the graphics preset is set to minimum, and you can see we're achieving well over 100 frames per second. That brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench single core score of 2974 and multi core score of 15726. And in the anti 2 benchmark test, we have achieved 1.4 million. Okay, onto 3D Mark, Steel Nomad Light score 2991. And in Time Spy, we've achieved 3500. And 3D Mark Fire Strike score, we've achieved 8122. And here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2025, showing you the latest mini PCs and seeing how they compare with each other. Now all mini PCs are ranked by Geekbench multi-core scores, so higher the score, faster the PC, and therefore higher it ranks on this performance chart. Now for those people who are not bothered about benchmarks, I've also given each mini PC a rating out of 100 based on overall features, specs and performance. So you can see exactly which mini PC is the most powerful and which one is the best in terms of overall rating. So based on that, the Minis Forum AI X1 Pro takes position 1 on this chart with a Geekbench multi-core score of 15,726 and I've also given this mini PC an overall rating of 97 out of 100. So a new king has been crowned in the mini PC department. If you want to see the full versions of any of my charts online, then head over to chickstech.com and read them at your leisure and completely free of charge. So there you have it guys, that was the Minis Forum AI X1 Pro. Standout features for me, AMD Ryzen AI 9 performance, supports triple 4K display output, you get plenty of connectivity with USB 4, Oculink, two Ethernet ports, and the list goes on. You also have two cooling fans internally and two spare SSD slots to play with. That being said, performance is impressive. The chipset is super fast. Gaming performance is the best I've tested when it comes to these type of mini PCs. You can undertake pretty much any task you like from general web browsing, office applications, coding, graphics, and even 4K video editing. This thing can handle anything you throw at it. The latest AAA games can be played on medium to high settings. Some games can be played in ultra settings and still achieve at least 30 frames per second. If you connect an external graphics card via Oculink, or even USB 4, you can boost that gaming performance to another level. Now that's all for this video. If there's anything you want me to test, then do let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, then hit the like button, sub to the channel, and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.